it was important to uh, talk a little bit about Intuitor this morning. And it's wonderful to have our colleagues from across um, the various different partners, uh, universities and institutes of technology here with us and also online. It's wonderful that we have over 400, I believe, that have signed up for this conference today. So it's a nice opportunity to give you an insight into uh, the project and the work that's happening collectively and collaboratively across the sector. So just to give you a little insight into it, here are all our partners, many are here today, as I said. Um, this is a very unique project where at the technological university sector and the Institutes of Technology, we formed a partnership last February to come together and work on this really unique project that was called EnTutor. The project uh, is worth about 40 million euro. There was about 38 million euro awarded to the sector to support um, digital transformation and also looking at education for sustainability, EDI, and the development of staff and also the, our, I suppose, our digital ecosystem as well. So it's a very exciting project. It is funded under Next Generation EU, uh, we report back through the HEA and certainly through TIA that are coordinate, coordinating the project with us. And we have Sharon Flynn here with us today as well. It's lovely to have you here, Sharon. And Dr. Joseph Ryan and Dr. Sharon Flynn are in the TIA Center of coordinating the project. And then across the country, we have leaders in each university who are leading a large team that are delivering out a very uh, ambitious um, work packages, which you'll hear, see in a moment. So, um, okay, so centrally, central principles that are evidenced throughout the implementation of the project is it's all about transformation of learning, teaching and assessment. It is about EDI as well and digital transformation. And it's timely with having the discussion here with Neil and also we'll hear which, from Jilly later, um, how we're digitally transforming. And that has an impact on all the work packages that we're working through in EnTutor certainly as well and in teaching and learning. So central as well is sustainability and education for sustainability. And as I said, it is a national initiative and a partnership approach. We do have deliverables to the EU. We do have to meet um, milestones and show evidence of engagement. And we're working very hard uh, in reaching those targets where we will impact uh, 9,600 students, and that is across the sector. So if we look at that in ATU alone, we're focusing on 12% of our student population. So that'll be about 2,400 that we'll demonstrate impact and involvement with the end tutor um, uh, opportunities. And then when we look at staff, 4,000 staff, um, ATU's share of that is about 850 staff. So I think we're well underway in relation to engagement. And there's certainly since... The beginning of January, there's been lots of activity with staff through the end tutor masterclasses that were launched and also through a series of uh, CPD initiatives that are ongoing across our institutions. Um, the project is, this is, I suppose, the architecture of the project. And there is three streams within that. We're transforming the student experience, we're developing staff capabilities, and we're enabling um, uh, our digital ecosystems and EDI, sustainable development goals, and transformation of the pedagogical and learning environment is central to that. And these themes are mentioned as well, and Orla mentioned them earlier, and they're central to everything that we're doing. So they're underpinning a lot of, um, uh, when we look at the fellowship awards that recently came out and the challenges champion roles, uh, colleagues are taking on leadership roles in these various different themes and driving change and innovation uh, in ATU and across all of our partner universities. I won't go through all the detail in here, but this will probably give you just a snapshot on the nine ambitious work packages. And we have till December 2024 to deliver out on these initiatives. Um, we have milestones to complete by next April 2024 to show engagement with staff and students. And, I, and I'm pleased to say a lot of activity is well underway. And that's as a result of the great partners that are here in the room and also we have partners online as well. So um, we have a, a brilliant team here in ATU. And this, uh, we I won't go through up the names, but many of them are here. And Jessica Duffy, who has organized our conference today for us, which I'll mention later on um, we have lots of colleagues here so we have a fantastic team built up we're delighted that we have now um, 
50 uh, between the student or the fellowship awards and the student champions. We now have 50 within that team. And we have a further 21 student champions that were identified and recruited in the last couple of weeks. So that will bring us to, I suppose, a, a wider team in HU of about 71 between staff and students that are leading out and developing uh, a lot of the work that's going on across these work packages. So just a quick look at stream one. And stream one, um, there's kind of five key areas that we're, we're, our work is centered on. Um, for the sector, um, uh, Dr. Maura Maguire and myself, uh, we're leading out on stream one for the sector and working with our colleagues. And the first initiative, which will actually be launched officially on May 23rd by uh, Minister Harris, will be the fellowship program. So. You probably remember this was launched probably at Christmas time. There was a call for proposals. We had over 250 responses across the sector. 133 projects were awarded. These are fantastic projects that involve students as partners and lots of innovation in relation to those themes that are mentioned. We have successfully secured 28 that are in ATU and you'll hear more about them. They'll be officially launched in May and then the work will begin. And it's nice to see some of the Fellowship Award colleagues are here in the room as well today and some champions also and then moving to just over on the right there we have the student digital champions and thank you to Jessica and Noreen and John and the students union here in ATU they did a massive amount of work over the past couple of weeks in recruiting our student champions so we've 21 fantastic student leaders from across the nine uh, campuses so we're really looking forward to working with them also we're building out I suppose a proof of concept and a pilot for a student and digital backpack system, uh, I suppose a virtual learning environment that will allow our students to gain extra credentials and a backpack of skills that they can take with them um, as when they leave uh, when they leave college. So initially, we're going to just work with the first one. The one hundred student champions are going to feed into this pilot system, and we'll get feedback from them. And I'll show you in a moment just a picture on that. Um, we also, across each institute, each university institutional lead is leading out on the development of an access group for hybrid and high flex uh, learning within their own institute. And then we're coming together uh, collectively together in the sector to share resources and work on um, how we can align some of these access programs and identify what markets we're targeting for, for each uh, cohort as well. So there's work on underway there. We also have a really interesting project underway looking at micro-credentials and we've just recruited Sarah who's here in the audience working with uh, Moira and I and colleagues across the sector where we're doing a lot of research on seeing um, where the gaps are, where micro-credentials could be offered um, from a regional perspective and also from a national perspective from the, um, the TU. So we're beginning to do some mapping work and the idea is by January that we would have at least a suite of seven micro credentials from the TU sector that we can promote and present to industry and organizations across the country. So 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 that work is underway. I just just quickly popping up there the Fantastic colleagues in ATU that have been awarded. Now, similarly, it would be the same across the country. There will be awards in all of our partner universities as well. So congratulations to all of you. And it will be announced on May 23rd officially as well. So in relation to the student digital backpack, we will, I suppose, building the, the proof of concept and begin the piloting phase from June. Uh, we have selected uh, a suite of micro courses. They are non-accredited. Uh, the student digital champions will be the first students that experience this interface and gain these digital badges. They will be offered a suite of five badges to begin with. They have to choose four. They will do them over the summer period as part of their role as a champion. We're equipping them with all they need to engage with these. They'll be five hours each. Some of them, actually one of them is two and a half hours, I think, but most are about four or five hours each. Um, we have a badge on sustainable development goals, introduction to sustainable development goals, and great work that's been done with David, our instructional designer, and John Skehel, who've been working on that in the end tutor. And we'll be this will be shared throughout the country and on the backpack, which is fantastic. We're also working with a company, Sage and EPGM, in relation to an academic integrity course that we'll try with our champions. And then we look to 
to roll that out to our first year students from September across the country. Um, other areas, EDI is another one, community engagement, another uh, great digital badge that has come through from ATU that we're able to share across the country. Orla Skehan, who's one of our designers here in Galway, has uh, developed that badge. So we're delighted to see that go up in the system. And we also have a digital kind of discovery mapping tool that students can access and um, they'll be able to discover their digital capabilities and move from there. So a lot of work to go into this backpack system. We have a lot to learn. It is, I suppose, a pilot project. And then the idea is that we'll make it more widely available across the sector after Christmas. Um, so that's the plan. So um, this is, I suppose, the idea for the end tutor project and how the student digital backpack, the identity will look. So you'll see that in the coming months to come. Okay, so in relation to Stream 2, Stream 2, again, is all very focused on um, building staff capabilities. Um, Professor Jacqueline McCormick and uh, Keith McCar or Keith or Ken McCarthy, who's online from SETU, they're leading this uh, stream for the sector. And there's fantastic work underway, and we're implementing lots of initiatives. You've seen the masterclasses series that's come through. There's work underway looking at uh, high-level principles for for our sustainable curriculum framework and also uh, which is about to happen hopefully now it'll it'll kick off in may if not may it'll be june we're looking at a staff uh, cpd plan and a needs analysis around that and that will be um, implemented in all sites across uh, the country and delighted to have our academic champions. These are just the ATU champions. We have 22 uh, recruited and in place, and they'll play a really important role in rolling out the Sustainable Futures Curriculum Framework into the next year and working very closely with the Teaching and Learning Centre and ATU. And similarly, that is the same for all of, um, all of our partner institutes in relation to the curriculum framework. They will be working with the registrar's function and the teaching and learning centres to uh, to roll out and develop that. And this is just a picture. I put this up because we only had them yesterday. Or yes, sorry, Monday. We had all our champions and our fellows together for the first time face to face in the woods in this beautiful location that Ellen McCabe uh, on the Entutor Project, our teaching and learning quarter. She organised this along with Noreen Henry, who's here as well. So it was a fabulous get together for everyone to kind of think, plant ideas, work out plans for the future and how we were going to implement um, the ideas coming through from end users. So, uh, so thanks to everyone involved in that. There's something coming through here. <laughs> um, it's not my bad laptop. Okay. So, right. So that was that. And this was a fabulous output and we can share it with everybody. We have a fantastic graphic harvester who's a lecturer in Sligo, ATU Sligo, Tam Tasman, Tamsin. And uh, she took on this job of collecting all the ideas from the fellows and champions on Monday. So um, lots to keep us thinking and planning for the future uh, in relation to the implementation of these projects. Okay, and then finally, another piece around the framework. As I said, we're working very closely with Teaching and Learning Centre. Delighted to have my colleagues here in Teaching and Learning. We've Neil Plunkett, we've Deirdre McClay, and recently joined ATU, Well Higgins, who's taking on uh, taking on the role here in Galway, Mayo, in Teaching and Learning. So we'll be working very closely with the team and developing this Sustainable Futures Curriculum Framework in partnership with the end tutor team. Uh, we'll be working through that process in bringing it through academic council in the autumn but first of all we need to i suppose um sort out the uh the high level principles and agree them and jacqueline is leading a session with us next week where we're going to look at that together for the sector the high level principles okay so um and then finally stream three um, a lot of investment is going into uh, software systems, all these things that we need to help us to be more agile and more responsive in this digitally transformed environment that we, we are all working in. Lots of work going on in relation to the digital campus. So Pat Heffernan has, is doing quite a bit of work, Pat Heffernan and ATU um, in this area and liaising with all our colleagues across the ATU on that. There's investment going in at a national level. Um, Sharon, who's here with us is coordinating lots of initiatives around central procurement with the team in Thea and the central project management office. So, and also Francis in uh, our 
Tus. Uh, Trevor, they're working on lots of different initiatives in procuring for proctoring and central examination systems and all of that. So we have lots of funds coming through that will support us in some of the big areas that we need to help help us with the student experience. And then also some colleges are working towards uh, CRM and developing their CRM systems. We're putting further investment into IRA, which is which very welcomed within the library system. And of course, of course, we're also looking at other digital innovation and transformation investment ideas that will work for us at a local level. Um, and possibly VLE integration has been looked at as well. So that's it. They were the milestones I mentioned at the beginning. So we're working hard to achieve them. And we've um, Sharon's keeping us on top of that, reminding us what, what we have to achieve by when. And, and then finally, there will be further sessions uh, for staff across the HU where we will be exploring with the team over the next couple of months. So if there's questions on that, we'll be looking forward to meeting you in different campuses. Um, so, so that's it, Chine. So uh, thank you so much. And we're going to have coffee. Is that right? <laughs>